All right, I'm excited about today's video because it's gonna be mostly a full face of first impressions. Let me tell you what I've got. Most of the products I have here were sent to me in friend mail. You know, sometimes when my friends and I get PR or we buy products that don't work out for us, we just kind of send mail back and forth so the rest of us can experience the products. And I got my hands on the Auric Glow Lust. I've also got the Dior Lip Oil in Cherry. I've got the new Say Concealers that they sent to me in PR. Credo Beauty sent me a little sample of the Keir Weiss Blush in Blossoming. They sent a bunch of other stuff too, but it was all like reusable cotton pads and I didn't really need it, but this looks really cool. I also have two new Fawn Beauty glosses. I've had these for probably a month now, but I totally spaced and forgot to show them on camera. I forget if I showed the Say Air Set powder on camera, so I'll do that. I have a new ColourPop Super Shock bundle, Flower Beauty lipstick, four Chantecai lipsticks, a Bobbi Brown lipstick, and finally I've got the Live Tinted Hue Guard sunscreen, so let's jump in. This is not a first impression. I don't know if you can see, but I'm almost out of this and I've only had it for a month, truly. I really don't wanna reach for anything else. Um, this is a mineral sunscreen, it's SPF 30. It's a three-in-one mineral sunscreen, a moisturizer and a primer. A lot of sunscreens say that when they're a mineral sunscreen, but I don't ever feel like they actually are that. This is different. Let me show you. I think six pumps is a quarter teaspoon. And I know that looks like a lot, but that's what dermatologists say you need for your face. Look how incredibly thin this is. It's absolutely wild. And on me, you know, I have skin that is in between fair and light, and it doesn't have an orange cast on me, even with the six pumps. It just feels like the most beautifully silky and lightweight moisturizer. Like this stuff is absolutely incredible. I bought it for John, John fell in love with it. This is the first ever sunscreen that John loves so much that he wears every day. That's really saying something. It doesn't get stuck in his beard. It blends perfectly into his skin. Once I'm done blending this in, I'm gonna wait a couple minutes so you can see what the real final finish looks like. So I let the sunscreen sit for a minute and it's, Definitely got a little bit of a dewy finish. I think it looks dewier on camera right now because of the moisturizer that I used beforehand, um, but it will set down a little bit more. I would say it has more of like a natural skin-like finish, not quite this dewy, but it is absolutely fantastic. I'm almost out. I'm gonna buy like three more because I don't ever wanna live without this. I love that this was specifically designed for people of color and I just happened to be able to use it. That's really great because, you know, finding a mineral sunscreen that doesn't leave a white cast is really difficult and finding one that's accessible, meaning like you can get it at an Ulta or a Sephora, and finding one that is lightweight and not like greasy or thick or drying is a miracle. I truly think this is a miracle product. This isn't sponsored, I'm acting like it is, but lip tinted, sponsor me please, because this shit's fantastic. The next thing I wanna talk about are the new Say Concealers. They sent me the shades one and two, and I'll swatch them on the back of my hand for you. Um, basically, this is supposed to be a dewy, light coverage concealer. It's supposed to be blurring and hydrating and just kind of blend seamlessly into skin. I do have some, some issues with it, which I'll, I'll tell you about, but first, let's just swatch the shades. These are shades one and shade two. Um, yeah, you can see that there's quite a huge jump in between one and two, and these are the shades that are right next to each other. So sadly, if you are not a porcelain skin tone and if you are not a very yellow leaning light medium skin, there's not gonna be a concealer for you in this range. Neither of these match my face. And when I mix them together, it's too yellow because of how deep this is. The shade range for these concealers is extremely limited. I think they're launching with nine shades. Someone told me 12. It hasn't launched yet, so I couldn't just go to the website and check it out. Um, at least while I'm filming this. I did talk to the brand about it. They said that they're already in product development to develop the in-between shades. But the naming system for that is so weird. It's like they made a porcelain and a light medium. So you're gonna put light as 1.5 when there are so many different, you know, complexions and undertones in between. I don't really understand why you would launch a concealer and then while you were still in the middle of de developing the other shades for it, why not just wait and launch all of them at once for a more inclusive range. And when I say inclusive, I mean everyone. Like they, they left out everyone <laughs> with this launch. I honestly would love to speak with some people who have worked at beauty brands. I would really love to know like, is that something that investors are driving? Is that because of the board? Like who's making the decisions 
that you launch nine shades of a concealer that has been done a hundred times before. Like, like who who's making those decisions, you know? I just, I really don't understand it. Now, obviously these are extraordinarily sheer, so you're barely gonna get coverage from these concealers as it is, meaning that they are more flexible, so undertones probably don't matter as much because it is so sheer. Um, but that's a huge jump between one and two. Say told me that they're launching the additional shades soon and they told me that I could share that information. This is quite disappointing considering people have been very critical of Say and their shade ranges of their bronzer, of their slip tint, um, of their marketing around their sunscreen, the sun visor sunscreen being uh, invisible in all skin tones when it definitely isn't. I'm very grateful that they sent these to me in PR, especially considering that they know I would be taking a look at their shade range, knowing I've been very vocal and very critical about them. Um, so kudos to them for still continuing to send me PR, but I just, I can't, um, I can't, even demo the product without first talking about that. Okay, as you can see, I have some hormonal breakouts, so I don't think this is gonna cut it for me, but I'm gonna start under my eyes and just mix a little bit. It's mixing together really nicely. I think the yellow isn't too, too intense. Um, I tried to put a little bit more of the super light shade so that it wouldn't be too yellow, but you know, I think the texture of it looks really nice. Definitely a light coverage concealer, definitely quite dewy. So if you're a no makeup makeup person, this could probably work really well for you if you can find a shade. Blending out really nicely. Okay, yeah, I would say for a light coverage concealer, this actually looks pretty nice um, in terms of the texture. It, I've definitely had some light coverage concealers before that were barely there. Like I did not like the Glossier Stretch Concealer. This reminds me a lot of the Neutrogena, oh, I forget what it's called, but it's in like kind of square packaging with a silver cap. I had the shade Accrue, which was a perfect match. So let me dot it all over my face instead of foundation and see how that goes. Yeah, so far it looks nice. I think it looks really nice all over the skin because it's, you know, it's dewy, but it's not, super crazy dewy. There's still a little bit of coverage, although I do prefer more of a strategically placed, like full coverage concealer. It's blending nicely, but my skin looks a little dewier than I prefer. I don't like my skin to look wet. But I do know that a lot of my friends really love dewy complexions, so, you know, maybe this will be your jam. At the end of the day for me, can I recommend that consumers go out and buy two products to mix to get their right match? No, would I do that? No. If you really love the brand, you know, if you really love trying new things, then I do think this is a nice formula. Like my under eyes, I don't think, um, I don't think it looks bad at all. It's just not my personal preference, but if you love a light coverage dewy concealer, maybe this will be your thing. All in all, I just wish that Say would spend a little bit more time and effort on their shade ranges because I think their formulas are actually really nice. I love their cream bronzer. I think it's one of the best makeup products I've ever tried. I love their dewy blush or dew blush. Their air set powder formula is fantastic. And while the concealer isn't my personal formula of preference, I can totally see a lot of people loving it. So would really just love to see Say commit to better shade ranges and maybe hire like a VP of diversity and inclusion or someone on that team who can really push that forward because I do think that Say has the elements there to be a really cool brand. I'm gonna schwack on a little Makeup by Mario bronzer. This is in the shade Light. I talked about this in my last video. I picked it up during the Sephora Spring Sale and I just feel that it's such a beautiful shade. It's a beautiful, blendable kind of sheer formula. It never looks like chalky or powdery on the skin. And I think because of the, the shade being so light, it's really, it's really skin-like even when I'm like super heavy-handed like I am right now. And I have some hormonal breakouts that are healing, so I'm just adding my Makeup Forever Full Cover Concealer. And now I've got the Kier Weiss Cream Blush in Blossoming. I've heard people rave about this for such a long time. I know Amanda Z really likes it. And I would love to know what all the fuss is about. All right, so, ooh, wow, okay. Woo, super thin, so thin, so emollient. I barely touched it and then it just like spread everywhere, wow. I think maybe I'll try with my fingers first 
This shade and the finish, because it's so dewy, reminds me exactly of the Air Perez Carrot Color Pot in Harmony, which is one of my all-time favorite cream blushes. It's exactly this color. It's like a peach with a hint of pink, dewy finish, extremely blendable. I can see why people love this. It's so, 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 so thin, and it doesn't have like a sticky, tacky, bomb-like finish that can be a little bit trickier to work with that kind of texture that can pick up on foundation or concealer underneath. I can see why everyone loves the Cure Weiss formula, although it does look like all of a sudden the color faded quite fast. Yeah, this does seem like a very, very beginner-friendly cream blush formula. For me personally, would I spend my money on this? No, because A, I know Cure Weiss is quite expensive. B, this is the same color as the Air Perez Carrot Color Pot in Harmony, which I already own. I actually prefer that formula. Um, it's, it's just really because it has quite a dewy finish. And you know, you guys know me at this point, I like a cream to powder formula right now for ease of application. And when I go for a cream, I like something like the Phytosurgeons Skin Sparks, um, something that is skin-like. It's not dewy, it's not matte, it's somewhere in between. It gives me more control over my look. That's what I, what I prefer. But I know so many people love cream blushes with a dewy finish and I think that looks really, really nice. One of the products I'm most excited about trying is the Auric Glow Lust. My friend Claire sent this to me because it was too dark for her. This is the shade Selenite. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so Selenite I think is gonna be a perfect match for me. This is really great. Thank you, Claire. It feels similar to the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, but it feels a little bit more creamy than that. I would never use something like this as a primer. The glowiest I would go for a primer is the In Beauty Face Glaze because when I wear makeup, I do tend to get quite oily in my T-zone. So I like strategically placed glow and this could be a really great option instead of my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I've wanted to try this for a long time, but I didn't like how huge the bottle was. I really love my Hollywood Flawless Filter because it comes in a mini size in my shade and that's really all I ever want, is just like a travel size in anything I own. So let's just see how it is here. Yeah, it's really nice. It might be a little less glowy than the Charlotte Tilbury. I really treat the Hollywood Flawless Filter like, uh, like a highlighter. And I treat the In Beauty Face Glaze like a primer. This might be something in between. I think honestly I have to try the Auric Glow Lust when I have skin that's not so wet looking right now because of that concealer and my sunscreen. I feel like I need to give it another shot, you know, cause right now my skin looks like I got fucking super soaked, but yeah, that's beautiful. No issues with the texture. Color is a perfect match. So thank you, Claire, very excited. Oh my God, the sun is changing like crazy on me. So I keep having to adjust my position. Now let's go in with the Say Air Set Powder. I really like the Say Air Set Powder it has very, very tiny holes where the powder can be dispensed. So when you tap it into the lid, you don't like dump out a bunch of powder. The hero product of this, in my opinion, is the brush. It's really soft and fluffy. It's nice and small, so you don't over powder your face. And I love their bronzer brush too. So I'm looking really shiny here. And I'll take it up into the under eye. I never like to put powder directly on my under eye but just sort of the excess. I'm gonna add a little on my chin right there and just tap, 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 tap. I was watching Painted by Spencer the other day. I'm trying to pay a lot more attention to makeup artist techniques because Lord knows I don't know jack shit about anything. And so he was saying that you, you never want to take a brush and like buff because that picks up hairs on your face and dead skin cells, and it makes your makeup look more textured. He was saying, no matter what you do, just pat, pat and tap. So that's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember. No, no buffing motions, even though buffing is like a lot more satisfying. <laughs> so those ColourPop shadows are super, super shattered. Um, so instead, I'm just gonna use my bronzer, which is always such a perfect go-to eyeshadow. It's the Makeup by Mario. Just adding a little under the eye. I just spent 30 minutes recording the rest of the video and realized it never recorded, so let's start over. This video is an absolute disaster. <laughs> um, so I topped off the look with the L'Oreal Age Perfect Mascara in lash magnifying, easy to remove waterproof. Just make sure you get the one with the little blue label at the bottom. That's the one that's tubing. 
I'll link it in the description box below, but I love that it's a dryer formula, really holds a curl because of that and it removes with water um, and it's affordable. So what more could you want? So I got this Flower Beauty lipstick in Blossom on Ulta and it's fine, but it's nothing special. It's super thin, feels like Vaseline, very sheer, glossy, um, more, more sheer and emollient than the Merit lipsticks. I just don't think this shade is very me, Blossom. It's very much like a mauve brown, kind of throws me off. So super nice formula, has a little bit of like a powdery floral vanilla scent, not my fave. Another lip product I don't like is this Bobbi Brown lip product. It actually doesn't say what it is, but it's the one where you kind of push it and then it comes out in this rounded bullet. It's also very thin, very sheer. This is in Honey 2. If you like barely there makeup that barely feels there, very looks there, then this is nice. Um, but it has that classic Bobbi Brown kind of like crayon lip scent. I just don't think this is anything that is like really worthy of your money. So I will be passing that to a friend. Now let's get into lip products I love. I cannot stop reaching for the Fawn Beauty lip glosses. Um, they're the serum glosses. I have the shade Honey that I love. I picked up Sweater Weather and Sugar Plum Princess. Princess? Princess. Um, Sweater Weather is a beautiful kind of like raspberry with a hint of red and Allie Glines loves this one too. Mm, these are so beautifully thin and lightweight in a way for the first time that doesn't slide around my mouth, migrate outside my lip lines. It still feels nourishing for a very thin formula. So that's Sweater Weather, just a beautiful, beautiful raspberry shade that's opaque, no shimmer, has a little bit of like a coconutty scent to me. I think the website says vanilla, to, but to me it smells coconut. It just feels like nothing on your lips. I can slap this on for a client meeting and I know it's not gonna be around my teeth. There's gonna be no white ring because um, it's not gloopy or sticky. There isn't gonna be any like lip product in between my lips kind of doing that like tacky thing. And it's just a really beautiful formula. I think each product is like $16, comes in a massive range of shades. So if you love a lightweight lip gloss, um, if you love supporting small businesses and woman owned businesses, then definitely check out Fawn Beauty. I think this one might be my favorite though. It's Sugar Plum Princess and it is a gorgeous Barbie pink that's super sheer with a ton of silver glitter. Look at that. Oh. Mm. I just think it makes your lips look really good. Like so shiny, glossy. Mm. How pretty is that? I don't know how she did it because you can't feel the shimmer, but there's like a lot of shimmer in here. It just feels like nothing, just like liquid silk or something like it's it's crazy i just love these so sugar plum princess might be my favorite i'm not sure now i have the dior lip oil in cherry my friend claire sent this to me and i love that it has like a chunky applicator just like the in beauty ones the formula though is very very much thicker than in beauty in terms of this color cherry being such a light sheer kind of pinky red i would reach for the in beauty lip glaze in number one candy apple over this oop it is doing this kind of like it's a little sticky. I gotta say, I'm surprised. See? It's a little sticky, heads up. But I like sticky, I like thicker lip products. Um, just a note though that, you know, if you don't, maybe maybe don't get this, but I love the candy apple scent of the In Beauty Lip Glaze in number one. I would prefer that. I think it's also a little bit more pigmented. Um, this makes me though wanna try the Dior Lip Oil and Mahogany because this is a nice thick formula. Um, but I would love it in that kind of sheer medium brown. The only thing I don't love is the sort of minty vanilla scent. Not my fave. In terms of the lip products I'm most excited about, I have four lip products from Chantecai. This is the Hydrating Lip Tint in Calendula, which is a bright, bright, but very sheer orange. And it's so, so thin. It feels like you're just putting on oil in a stick form. So not my favorite formula because I don't find it very nourishing. I much prefer the Lip Chics, but wow. It is nice when you do a bright and have it in a very lightweight sheer formula because it's just like this pop of orange, but you don't really have to worry about it kind of getting on your teeth or being super bold. Like it's just sheer and bright and wearable. I actually think I can see myself using this because even though it's like a bright orange, not my thing, it's really pretty and the formula looks really nice. Like I think it's flattering on the lips. 
you're gonna be shocked, but the rest are all really bold lip colors. This is the Lip Chic in Ceylon, which is this like gorgeous deep reddish brown. I'll do a sheer layer first. Right? It's like Dior Mahogany. And I can very much build it up as well. And when you build it up, it reminds me a lot of Merit Lavenu. If you watch that, that video back, the Sephora haul review video, um, if you look at Lavenu, you can see the pigment settle into my vertical lip lines on my upper lip. I really didn't like the way it looked in that footage, even though a lot of people said it was a really great color on me. That was really sweet, but I just felt like that, that kind of stiffer formula made it look a little unflattering on my, my lines. But this is really similar and I feel like it's not doing that. It doesn't, it doesn't look, it doesn't age me like Lavenue did. So I think this is gonna be my kind of like vampy bold lipstick favorite. Then I have Passion Flower, which is a bright, bright orange, but I'll put it on my lips so you can see. I think I'm gonna do a brown liner with it. So this is Passion Flower. Whoa, oh buddy. Right. I never like the way I look in orange lipsticks for some reason. I just feel like it doesn't go with my cool undertones. But this is really fun. I can see myself, if I'm like using a lot of self-tanner this summer, I can see myself wearing this in some videos, wearing that out with just like a nice wash of like a shimmery peachy eye. So that is Passion Flower. I added a brown liner again, and the one I'm most excited about is Wild Poppy. So here are the three lip chics, Ceylon, Passion Flower, Wild Poppy. It's like a neon kind of coral pink. Ooh, yeah. That's fun. Ooh, I like it. What do you think between the two? What's your preference? Passion Flower, the orange, or Wild Poppy, the kind of like pinky coral? So I was going to talk about all my favorites from the Ellis Brooklyn scent diary, but my lighting is going down. The sun is like blinding my face right now. I keep having to move back in the room. So I think I'm gonna save this for another video, maybe just talk about my favorites, because my next video is gonna be my current favorite. So I'll just save this for that. So let's talk about everything that I tried today. My skin is definitely looking way too dewy for my preference. I think it was a combination of my moisturizer, the sunscreen, the concealers, and the the um, Kier Weiss blush. Honestly, I'm kind of shocked. I expected myself to fall head over heels in love with Kier Weiss. Everyone raves about the formula. You saw how many layers I applied and it is virtually gone from my face. I don't see any color left on my blush at all. I just see my bronzer. So that's not a good indication for me that that's a formula that's gonna work with my skin. My face eats blush, like I apply it and then it's gone just like this, which is why I very much prefer a powder or a cream to powder formula because they're more long lasting. For me, the Kier Weiss blush is a pass. The Auric Glow Lust looks really beautiful on the tops of my cheekbones. I'm gonna have to try it on a base that's not quite as dewy. I think I talked long enough about the concealers. You know how I feel about that. Definitely way too dewy to use all over my face, but I'm pleasantly surprised that my under eyes don't look as bad as I thought they would. I thought they'd be super yellow or super bright. Just a dewy light coverage concealer. It is what it is, whatever. The Say powder is really nice, but I don't know if it's because of everything I've layered, but my skin still looks so wet. It definitely didn't mattify my face enough. It looked beautiful and like blurring and filtered at first. So I think I need to keep using that powder to see if it, it kind of doesn't keep the oils under control for a while because my skin looks way too wet. Um, I think the makeup by Mario bronzer looks really nice. I love the way it looks as an eyeshadow, which I'm trying for the first time. I'm going to be giving the Flower Beauty lipstick and the Bobbi Brown lipstick to a friend. Um, as well as the Dior Lip Oil in Cherry. It's just so sheer that it really doesn't do anything for me. I have other formulas I prefer that are sheer, like my Fit Glow Lip Serums, but I would be very interested in getting my hands on their Mahogany Lip Oil. The Fawn Beauty Glosses, surprising win for me. I bought that shade Honey a while back and was so shocked that I fell in love with it. I keep it at my desk. Uh, bought two more and probably not gonna be the last ones that I buy. Fawn Beauty is launching a lip oil tomorrow, which is Thursday, April 28th. Um, they're launching a lip oil that is 
thicker than their serum gloss. So obviously I'm excited about that. I'll save the Ellis Brooklyn Scent Diary set for my favorites video. And then the four Chantecaille lip products, I love all of them. I'm gonna keep all of them. It's funny, looking in the viewfinder, I'm, I'm really like put off. My face looks dead. I think it's a mixture of the concealer being very uh, yellow and very dewy. I kind of look like sick. And then also the fact that the blush is gone just makes it look like I have bronzer and that's it, which makes my face look a little dead. And then combined with not being used to seeing my face and like a bold red lip, I just, it's, everything's throwing me off. So I'll definitely continue the love and uh, pass all those products to a friend so that they can try them out too. If you made it this far through this disaster of a video, well done you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.